spring is the season of rebirth and it feels like the rainforest is waking up. It brings new life, new growth and a kind of reset. This time of year feels like a magical in-between. The rainforest still holds winter's soft light, its beams reaching through the rainforest to cast its embrace. But summer's touch has also arrived. In the new growth and rushing waterfalls, the frogs cools and the signs of the budding tropical fruit. Spring feels like a celebration. The rainforest paints the landscape with her breath. The bright red leaves of the red cedars, the blue shadows stretching through the mountains, the soft morning yellow light, and the first sign of summer's green growth. We are celebrating with the new season, moving to the rhythm of the rainforest. Planting with the rain, learning to be as joyful as a baby goat, and to feel nature's touch on our skin. This is normally our dry season, so in spring it usually doesn't rain and everything dries out, but this year has been a very wet one. It's a hard balance because this wet year has already brought so much destruction and we fear for the summer ahead with another prediction for huge rainfall. But at this time of year the rain is beautiful, it fills the creeks and waterfalls, waters the fruit trees and lets the garden thrive. So for now, we're feeling very appreciative for the spring rain and shifting our routine with the weather. To live with the seasons, we're planting in the rain, letting the new trees and plants thrive with the wet. While us and the plants are loving the rain, the goats feel very differently. Last week, Moonbee and Paisley saw the rain for the first time. It was so funny to watch an animal see something so familiar for the first time. Just like their mama, they hate it. They stared at the sky and screamed. I imagine them saying, why is this guy being so mean today? They have gotten a little bit more used to it now, but like the rest of the goats, they hate getting shaggy and wet and get all grumpy with the weather. We're planting a lime tree here, which we hope one day soon will provide us with fresh limes. Thank you so much to our patrons for your support on our tree planting journey. So there's black cockatoos above. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Every time we plant a tree. I think that one of the most important principles of permaculture is to observe and interact with nature. This simple technique works in every climate and you can learn so much from simply watching nature. Observing the weather and the way that the plants interact with the seasons lets us realise that planting in the rain will allow our seedlings and trees to thrive with the moist soil. Another thing that we have observed from the rainforest is the way that the forest floor is always covered in a thick mulch. Mulching stores the rain in the soil, so for our dry spring we can catch this rain shower and the soil will stay wet for much longer. It stops the soil from drying out and can reduce the need for watering by 60%. Come back in.
now the sun shines lower than the sun. <laughs> of course. You're so happy. So these two have gotten so jumpy and playful, and they jump all over everything. And I think that they need a playground. <laughs> So I took a hammer and some scissors to our neighbor's smashed up old car and I got the seatbelts out and I think that I could make a rope bridge from them. Hey, Maria! So I think that's a good idea, right? And then these are old hardwood like fence posts or fence palings that mum cut up for firewood. We must steal them. <laughs> you are so cute! You are so bouncy! <laughs> but I'm gonna steal them and use them as the little <laughs> rungs on the bridge. Yeah? These guys 
seen a playground. <laughs> this is chaos. I feel like I'm babysitting the two naughtiest kids in the whole world. Moomy, you're not allowed to eat flowers. Okay, I'm actually gonna make your playground now instead of playing with you. No distractions. No distractions. Paisley, get off the table. Paisley, Moomy. I forgot to measure how long this bridge should be, <laughs> so I'm just gonna guess. Hey, I thought that this was gonna be chill and you're gonna sleep the whole time, but I was wrong. I was so wrong. Oh, Moonbee. So I've never actually used a staple gun before, but this is Julius that she uses for canvases. So I guess I'll just see how it goes and try not to staple myself. I wonder if it'll work. Oh, that works perfectly. Hi, be careful when I put the staple gun. That works so well. straight into the bush so we've got to be really careful about only natural ingredients and so I've just been taking the inside of the aloe vera plant I just add a little bit of water and whiz it The red cedar's new growth fills the rainforest. Their bright red leaves always feel like an announcement of the new season. Red cedars are one of the only deciduous trees native to here, so their bright budding leaves are always so beautiful filling the forests. With the unusual spring rain, it means that the waterfalls and rivers are flowing when usually they'd be slow and gentle at this time of year. The water feels heavy with a kind of excitement. This waterfall is a bit further from home, but we needed to pick up some supplies and we hadn't been here for ages. It's actually only five kilometers from the coast. It feels pretty incredible to be deep in the rainforest and know that just a little bit downstream is the beach. Standing in the midst of this waterfall feels like a celebration of the life that water brings and of the changing season. The energy and force of the water is incredible, flowing with such strength.
This is the land of the Rockwell and Mihibo people of the Bunchalung Nation. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the country we live on and recognize their continuing connection to the land and waters. We thank them for protecting this rainforest and its ecosystem since time immemorial. So when me and Julia were kids, we used to play down here all the time. We made all these different like rope bridges and play equipment for ourselves and we'd just swing in the trees all afternoon. And so I thought that this is the perfect place for a goatee playground. So I'm going to try to hang it up between these two trees. I hope it's long enough and I hope, I hope I can find a way to hang it to the tree. I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> what do you think, Lucy? Our drill has been broken for like the past six months so we have not been able to drill anything so I'm really excited about being able to pre-drill again because I've just been having to just go hard with the screws and it is so hard and then put that on top and then put a fattened screw through all of that into the tree. Would that hold? I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm, I don't know if I can hold the whole weight of the bridge while I screw it in. Try. I might borrow my uncle's drill to get that last bit in because I need a bigger drill than this. But for now, that's pretty good! Oh, yeah. Oh, 
The music in this video is by Fellow Hollow, whose soft and fragile songs connect us to their stories. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe. And thanks so much to our patrons for your support and friendship on our journey.